It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them, Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with the uh, University of Miami. Pat, another good block, and Toretta lays it up. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. LT, how are you, man? It's Wednesday night. Woo! Time for the Lamar Thomas show. And look, we are both at Kingswear <laughs> this week. How about that? How about that? <laughs> vir vir virtually. 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 There you go. Um, I'm, I'm Gary Furman, the publisher at Kingsport.com. He's, of course, Lamar Thomas, and we welcome everybody to the Lamar Thomas Show. And so we might as well, like, tell the story. <laughs> oh, no, man, so, please. You know, Kingsport had to close early tonight, oh. and, and so they said, hey, you know, um, Lamar, can you do the show, you know, virtually? And, and you know, he, they sent us the background of the store, which, you know, clearly works great. But there's just one problem. So Lamar <laughs> comes on to do the show, and I, I see, I see, I see. There's nothing there. I'm Gary, like, Gary, Lamar, it had, you're black. It had to be an hour. It had to be. I, I, I said, Lamar, you're black. Lamar says, "Thanks for the information." <laughs> that is true. That is. I true. never would have known. I, I, I didn't. I didn't know that, Gary. Thanks, but uh, thanks for informing so, me. So, so I said, Lamar. What happened to your camera? And he and he's like messing with it for like forty five minutes. And it was finally, longer than that, Gary. It was longer than that. It was longer. I'm done. It was longer nice. than that. And and and, <laughs> and I will. I, I was in panic mode. I didn't know. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to do this show. It was only showing my background. So just so happened, Patrick Austin, who is our uh, DFO of the uh, Orlando XFL team, called. And, and he does, he knows all, everything about computers. And he was like, I said, bro, I got a show to do. I got about 25 minutes to go. Can you please help me? He said, what's wrong? I said, my screen is black. He said, I got a tech guy on the phone. He calls the tech guy. We FaceTime. The tech guy starts laughing when he sees my screen. He starts laughing. And guess what he says, Gary? What he I said. haven't told you yet. I know. He said, slide the thing over. On the top of your camera, it acts as a cover that slides over my camera. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to tell you. So for an hour and thirty-two minutes, I didn't know there was a slide over my camera, and I was freaking out. So I didn't even think of that. Like yeah, I didn't even. Think I, I had no idea. And he started. The guy started laughing. He goes, "Hey, you see that little red thing up there? That little red dot? Slide it over." Yeah. That's so, awesome. Well, 
so we're not actually physically in Canesware. We are right. in Canesware virtually tonight, but this is the mm-hmm. Lamar Thomas Show presented by Canesware, and uh, mm-hmm. Canesware is your place for all of your game day needs um, for the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, you can visit their store on University Drive in Davie, or you can go to canesware.com and shop all day and night. And um, the show is also sponsored by the law office of Christine Rosendahl, Esquire, PA. You can reach her up in Palm Beach at 561-512-6199 or at Christine Rosendahl, ESQPA, at hotmail.com. And while we're taking care of business here, as we start the show, LT, who is feeding you tonight? Oh, I got some pizza. I got some pizza. Hold on, hold on, Gary. I got to make sure it's right so we can we can see this. We've already gone through this like three, four times. Let's see how I do this, Gary. Let's see. I go to settings, take off the virtual background, and voila. Pizza heaven. Oh, man. Go. Where the taste is a step above. Man, this pizza is Wait, so move the good. box a little bit over so they can see the phone oh. number. Because let me tell you guys something. This pizza, the other way. You got it. It's in reverse. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 954-349-4566. Pizza Heaven in Weston. For those of you that live out in West Broward County, has the most unbelievable pizza in town. They really do. And um, and most likely you'll see me in there. I sit in there and I shake hands and kiss babies and everything else. And I go up there and I, I actually get some pizza. But my favorite from Pizza Heaven, let me tell you what my favorite is. Here. Ah, I see this right here, Gary. Gary, baked ziti, baby. Ooh. Ooh, wee, oh man, we worth the eating right here. Let me tell you something. I take it. That's like a pie for me. I got one of my kids. It wouldn't take them a week to eat that. I'll tell you that. Oh man, so you got to go up to Pizza Heaven and see my boy Benny and tell him I sent you. Say, man, LT was talking about you on the show, man. He's a good dude, and they take good care of me. And my pictures on the wall with the boss of my league. Dwayne Johnson, Dewey, he's up there, Saps up there. There's a lot of guys up there on that wall. So go by and check them out. They do a great job over there. All right, LT, so uh, let's get into some football. Um, it, it, this season is insane, let's Man. be honest. It is, out of, it is out of this mind. So the Hurricanes go to Blacksburg, mm-hmm. um, and, and they're on a three-game <laughs> losing streak, and they, they got to find some way to win. And they play great in the first half. They jump out, you know, to the huge lead. And then the second half, they kind of, like, reverted backwards a little bit. Um, right. Penalties, like, there's no tomorrow. Lost mm-hmm. their discipline. Uh, I mean, everything went haywire. And they were very close to putting Virginia Tech in a spot to have a final chance to win that game. Uh, what were your thoughts watching Miami-Virginia Tech? I like how you say revert because, you know, it's almost like, okay, whatever that coaching staff did to them, whatever they said to them during that week, they came out fired up and ready to go. And then went in at halftime and and forgot all about what was taught to them because it just went backwards. It was the same old team we saw in those losses. Uh, You know, they gave Virginia Tech an opportunity to win the ball game. And the game was pretty much over. At first half, I mean, first of all, I couldn't even watch it. I had to go find it because I'm in South Florida and somehow the ACC network doesn't come to Western. I mean, what is that? So I had to go to a local sports bar and watch the game. And I was doing great until they, you know, it almost went haywire. And I had a little couple of adult beverages, but that's, we're not going to talk about that. But I mean, the fact is everything that they did in the first half, they looked like a, uh, they looked like they were on the road or something. They looked like they were on a roll, and it looked like they were on something special. And it looked like that whole week they were taught something. Second half went backwards. And you can't do that against great, good – you can't even do it against okay competitors. And Virginia Tech, they got lucky they were playing Virginia Tech, put it that way. Uh, so we're seeing, like, goofy stuff. Um, offensive line couldn't get the snap calls – right and they had seven penalties on the offensive line Mm -hmm. um several on the defense um i mean one of the one of the um boy my screen went haywire there for a minute um so uh one of them was to Corey couch Mm -hmm. 
just a ridiculous late hit out of bounds. And, and it was just like, it was like they just lost their minds, Lamar. And mm-hmm. um, it was crazy because this was a game they had to win mm-hmm. and they had it won easily. Mm-hmm. And they made it close unnecessarily and ended up not covering the spread, oh. which is which is a big deal for, for Canes fans who oh, yeah. now have gone five straight games without their team covering the spread. So my you better stop you, stop you better stop betting your lunch money and your rent money. I don't, bet, I don't money. bet. I don't bet, <laughs> but um I do do a show called You Bet with Lee Sterling from Paramount Sports uh-huh. And, uh-huh. and and he brought this to my attention that Miami is 0 and 5 this year against the wow. spread. Yeah. Don't don't bet with Miami against spread. And and it's hard to do. I mean, I I a couple of years ago, I tried to get into it, and it, it's very hard because you, you, you know, you're not happy with the win, and you're definitely sad about the losses. So, don't do it. Well, you know what the problem else. is, LT. They think Lamar Thomas and Clinton Portis and um, you know <laughs> Reggie Wayne and Michael Irvin are still out there playing, and they overvalue Miami when they set the lines. That's the truth. That's a true story. I, I, I tell you what, they didn't know number eighty-eight was going to be playing this week. I tell you again. Uh, it goes back to what you and I talked about, uh, maybe last week or maybe on the phone. Uh, you know, it was funny. I sent one of the coaches a message about, Hey, you guys better, uh, get number 88 in the game. And he was like, well, he doesn't know the plays. Well, I know I've been in those meetings before. He said he might not know the plays. I've been in those meetings before where the head coach says, Hey, somebody better teach that fucker. Somebody better teach him the plays right now because he's the guy we need in there. And it looked like, I mean, I think he started and, you know, he did well. Yeah, he played a lot. Played very well. Yes, yes. And almost every route he's running right now are go routes, Lamar. Yes, yes. Um, For that very reason of what you just mentioned. And uh, they obviously realize that this is not going to be able to continue, that they have to do more. with. If he's going to be on the field, he's going to have to do more than run go routes. So I believe they have been trying to expand. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, beyond that, uh, this week in practice. And, you know, we'll see the byproduct of that against Duke. Um, the other thing they're working on in practice, Lamar, is the running game. It is. It was yeah. pretty much missing in action again to the point where when they did get into the fourth quarter and needed to kill the clock, mm-hmm. they didn't have the run game at their disposal. Josh Gaddis, rather than put the game in his mind at risk, Went with what was working for them, and that was the passing game. Right. And got out of dodge. But, well, um, you know, the Kane you know, fan that wants style points was very rattled by that. There's, there's no style points. I mean, obviously, a win is a win. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're able to run the ball effectively at the end of the game. If you can't do that, you're putting yourself in harm's way. And, again, you give an opportunity to a team that, that should be packing it up, an opportunity to maybe win the game. So, if Lamar Thomas is the, the OC and calling the game, <laughs> and you're down there, there's six minutes left, and you just can't run the ball. Your O line has is just not working. Your running backs, their 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 timing, their rhythm, everything has gone haywire, and you're facing a situation where if you don't run the clock and move the ball, you're giving them the ball back with like four right. minutes left mm-hmm. to. Um, with a chance to win. So you you say I don't care I'm running the ball? Is that what you're saying? Uh no. I mean at some right. point you have to face reality. If it's not working, you have to do what you can do. I mean, if you're running the ball and you're getting minus yards or maybe one or two yards and I mean you are using a little clock, but it's not enough. And you have you to just the ball. you just better make sure you complete the passes. Correct, correct. correct. Yeah. They have to be safe passes. Um, something where your quarterback feels comfortable, maybe rollouts where you know if if it's not there, you can throw it out of bounds. Um, or or run it. <laughs> or, or run it or throw it in through the end zone, but it has to be something safe. You don't want a lot of passes across the middle. Uh, you want passes toward the sideline. So maybe I mean that's obviously stopping the clock, but at least you're getting some yards, and now you can. Try to run it one, get that one yard, and then go back to it. I mean, it's, 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 I, the fact that they had to do that, it was because they weren't getting in the running yards. 
they had to throw the ball. It, you have yeah. no choice. You're not getting any running yards. And if this becomes a if it's becoming a struggle for you to run the ball, you got to get some yards. You just, you just got to do what works and get the heck out of there. And, and you know, but it's funny that we were talking about this a lot on the message boards at canesport.com. And I mean, I was getting castrated on this subject because I said that I thought Josh Gaddis did the right thing. Um, and it's yeah. certainly not what you would want to do every week, but, right. but no. he, they had to get out of there and, yep. and, you know, TVD has been playing great for the last couple of weeks. They trusted him and it, it worked out. Well, I mean, you know, the, the two games, I mean, what the last game and, and this one. So, I mean, I wouldn't say he's been playing great, but these last, the, the, this win and the last win, he's played pretty good. Uh, but I wouldn't say great, great, but he almost had 500 yards the game before. So, but those games before that, that's why I can't consider, consider it great. So he has to continue to improve and to continue to be a leader. And those other guys will follow. You know, this this whole team, it's a whole team game, and there's no real big stars on this team. So it has to be a team game, you know, where guys are chipping in. You want guys to be able to, to uh Brashard Smith and you know those guys to be able to make plays and plays in special teams. There are a lot of facets to it where uh it's not one guy that's gonna get the job done. We we now know that, you know, you would have thought it might have been a rooster, or you thought it might have been a Mallory, or you but though it's a it's more of a team thing, you know. It's it's that's the way it is. I know one guy that was probably throwing shoes at his wall <laughs> and you know kicking his dog and yes. and all that when when when, when he saw the Josh guy Gaddis wasn't running the ball <laughs> and that of course is the voice of the fan Bruce Warner who is tasked on this show with representing the Canes fan and um, Bruce a lot of Canes fans were pretty rattled by oh, those yeah. choices of plays even though they worked. Yeah, well, they work, but there was one sequence where it was 48 seconds and they, for three downs. That's not good. I mean, you, even if you gain nothing, you got to burn off a minute and a half or so off that clock. So it, that was bad. That was real bad. And you can't do that. But, you know, we also talked to Leon last night. There's no push from that line. There were three guys out, weren't there, Gary? Three guys. So where are they going to get it from? They don't have the offensive linemen to do that. I think I saw Cooper in there a little bit, like the young kid, Inez Cooper, was in there for a while. But you, you, you still have to run the ball. And I don't know, Lamar, why don't they have any sort of toss sweeps or any of that stuff? <laughs> Everything is between the tackles. They stop it. So that's why you can't run the ball. There's got to be some imagination. Hey, uh, it kind of looks like Michigan student body left and student body right. Um, they may not feel bit. the line to get outside <laughs> and block. They can't it's, block. It's, Obviously, there's something that Gaddis doesn't feel comfortable doing. You know, it's it's you know, but at, you should be able to game plan certain things. And if you know they're they're stacking the middle, then why not run the ball outside with outside zones or sweeps, just like you said, or tosses or yeah. something else like that. Obviously, he just doesn't feel comfortable doing it. Uh, you, you, I would thought that last year I might have we might have seen Rooster running some tosses last yeah. year, and he was pretty explosive on it, but. This is a whole different year. Well, well let, let me ask you a question. brought up Trevante Citizen last night, and that still, to me, is a big loss because that kid could do everything. He was like Cleveland Gary. He's like all those – Williams, he's like those guys that could just do it all. Yeah, and he would have helped he for sure. He could get in the open field and still get tripped up by his shoelace. But, again, but let me ask you this, Coach Lamar Thomas, oh, yeah. the oh, assistant head coach of the Orlando franchise of the XFL, whatever X stands for, but it's the X Football League. And we have um, a name coming too. It, it should be revealed in the next week or so. Oh, they, there's going to be a real yeah. name, and, and we're oh, going to yeah. find out what the X stands yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Oh man! Well, no, no, no. The, the, we're oh, the Orlando, 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 Orlando ostriches. ostriches. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me ask you this, Coach Thomas. Okay. Um, they've had a million problems, right? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, injuries, drop balls, o, -O line play. We can name it. They've had a lot of problems this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're always fixing something every single week. Now, when coaches have to deal with that mm -hmm. and you're constantly fixing everything, do the little things like clock management, mm -hmm. like maybe running the ball outside instead of inside, do little things like that fall through the cracks because you're so focused on fixing things all the time. They can. 
you know, it, it just all depends on the coaching staff. I mean, it's, um, you know, I was with a guy before that was very thorough on stuff and he went through every kind of scenario and uh, we were very prepared for it. I was with another guy who kind of, when things didn't go well that week before, he concentrated on those little things that, those things that did go uh, bad. And we spent a lot of time on those things. And sometimes, like you just said, things kind of fall through the crack. So, I mean, it's it just depends on the coaching staff and who the head coach is on how they try to handle it. And as we well know, Miami has a lot of leaks in that water hose. So, you know, it, it, I don't know if you have enough time in the day to patch every leak. So they got to concentrate on some, something. And uh, hopefully, you know, you can still get some water out of that spigot. Well, that's I, what I was getting I'll tell you at. what, I like Ja'Cory Brown going in there. On oh, the yeah. I did and I'll tell you what's going to happen, Lamar. I know you're going to yell at me. Somewhere in the not too distant future, when we play these guys, uh oh, he's gonna take that snap, take one step forward, stop, and hit somebody down the field because they're not putting him in there just to run. Somewhere First, along the line, hey, that's the hey, setup, right? hey, the only way the only way I would have been mad at you if you'd have said he jumped, and that brings me back to the that Tip guy field. number 15 up in yeah. Florida. So don't bring that I didn't up. Say he jumped, <laughs> he ain't jumping. But he hit somebody down the field. You see, I liked it. Back that box. Did you like it? I liked it. I liked it. It was a change of pace. Uh, yep. I thought it was great. I thought that they did it at the right time. And, uh, you know, it gives every team now something to – they got to spend some time on that when they see yep. him come in the game. They have to spend some time in the scenarios of what he could do, uh, what Josh might be thinking he, he might do. So you got to spend time on that. It's not – that. And that's a great change of pace for, uh, for the University of Miami. Well, then let me let let me get your opinion on this, Coach Thomas. Okay. Um, he's played in two <laughs> games now. LT, no more. He's no more LT. Oh, no, I'm like I'm like I'm 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 giving it to him tonight. All right. No, these these are all coaching questions. All right. So now you've done it for two games. Mm -hmm. Two questions. Teams start preparing for it. Number one. Number two. You could do it for two more before he loses his red shirt. He could play mm -hmm. it up to four games. Mm -hmm. Is it such a important wrinkle? Uh, does it create enough problems that you would do that every game for the next seven games and blow his red shirt year to do it? Mm. Go ahead, coach. Well, <laughs> it might depend on if it, if I felt like my job was on the line, <laughs> which it's not. Which is not. So you know, you, again, we talked about this early in the year. Um, the only way Miami was is going to be successful is they're going to have to build depth. And depth comes with guys uh, coming up through the system, maturing, getting bigger, stronger, faster. And, you know, we're not going to a national championship this year. Okay, let's just let's, – in case some of you fans out there might think we still have a chance, we don't. So, um, you know, hey – let the guy play it one more game and or maybe uh, half of, something and you know but let the kid be able to come back now you'll see some greatness he had i mean we didn't get opportunities to play those four games and still can keep our red shirt year and we all would have loved to have done that but we the, the rules were different um this is something great because you still have your your years left your four years left to play and you got an opportunity to play big time college football, and um, that goal. That I mean, because you think about it. For me personally, first game, uh, Wisconsin. I got to play at ABC. I was scared shitless. I was nervous. <laughs> you know, I was like, "Oh my god, this is on ABC." This first game, Dennis Harrison's coaching. Oh my goodness. But if I would have got a chance to play against Cal Berkeley the year before. Or you know San Jose State or somebody, and got an opportunity to play a couple plays, maybe the whole game or the, the second half or something. I go into Wisconsin saying, "Yeah, buddy, I'm ready." I was more focused on do not trip and fall as you run out and give the play. Don't trip and fall. <laughs> so, but I, I think if, I think he's going to play the next two, Gary. And if they happen to blow one of these two games, then just just take them off, let them just redshirt. But if they win these two. And he's doing well. Maybe they should because they got Florida State, they got Clemson, they got Pitt. They got to win these games. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I don't think they'll red, they'll blow his red shirt. We'll see. Um, Lamar, let me ask you this: uh, How much practice time 
do you think a defense has to spend to prepare for that wrinkle? Ooh, there's a you, you got to spend a, a good load. I mean, they're 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 different scenarios too, because you're saying okay, these are the plays he ran well. We also have to prepare for the plays that he could run that they haven't run yet. That they haven't run yet. So these are things you're spending at least, I would say, two periods, maybe one to two periods uh, in that week to prepare. Or maybe for 20, kids. 30 minutes. Yeah, so you could be spending, uh, I'd say, 10, 10 minutes a day, but it's two periods, five periods. Um, you're, you're spending that, and you're saying, okay, now these are the plays he ran. This is how we stop him. This is what he could do. Let's make up some plays that he could do, that we've seen guys do out of this. Hopefully, Gaddis. Doesn't run this, but if he does, our guys will at least be prepared for it. So you're spending time. So, but but here's the difference: most of these wildcat guys are running backs. He's a quarterback. He's a legitimate quarterback. Yeah. A big kid too. Yeah, so you have to prepare for passes so, too. So that's what I'm saying. They're, that's right. They're I think not he should be playing. If he gets comfortable in this, I'd let him keep going. The, the great right. thing is, obviously, they've seen him run the ball. They haven't yes. seen him really get out and, and and throw it off of that formation. So that's what they got to prepare for. And they got to make sure the ends keep contained. Yep. I'd save that pass for Florida State. We might need it. <laughs> you, they, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's assume, because mm-hmm. it does make sense, that they are going to redshirt Ja'Curry Brown, okay? Um, and we are going to see this two more times this year. Um, how much value, Lamar, is there in having that wrinkle in your back pocket the opponent having no idea whether you're going to use it, they got to spend that 20 minutes of practice time preparing for it, mm-hmm. and they don't know whether you're going to use it or not. How much value is there in that? Oh, well, it's some value. I mean, that's why you do things like that to give people, um, you know, we, I, you run plays sometimes saying we're, we're setting this up for two, three games down the line. You know, you run a guy on jet sweep motion, and you never give it to them, but you're let you're letting them know that it could happen. So they have to not only prepare for the play that you're actually running, but they have to prepare for the jet sweep. Now you come up with you create another another wrinkle off of that, right. saying, okay, he's gonna they're gonna okay at some point they're gonna run the jet sweep, and then you come back with that different wrinkle, and that's how you get it's all a setup. Everything is a setup. So Gaddis putting this young guy in, this young man in running that. The way they they ran it. Now you got to prepare for everything, and of course, there's something down the line that they already have put in, and hopefully, you know, maybe we will pull it out against Florida State. <laughs> um, you know, in in one of your greatest moments as a college football coach, you recruited a young man to the University of Louisville by the name of Lamar Jackson, and um, I got to believe that you guys did this all the time at Louisville. With Lamar Jackson, I mean, you could do anything with him, and you could expand, you know, his playbook weekly if you wanted to, because of everything that he could do. Did Bobby Petrino go, go in that direction and put things in just to make people work on them, whether he was going to use them or not? Yeah, he did. I mean, it, of course, at first um, he was still on the belief that the kid could run his offense, and I think he smartened up after. Um, after Houston threw every blitz in the universe at us and the kid was so confused and he thought about it for a couple of weeks and he said, Hey, coach K who's on our staff, coach Kanakas, who actually coached, um, uh, a kid at Nevada, Nevada, uh, in the pistol formation. And we went to that later on in the year to, um, uh, Callan Kaepernick. Uh, we went to that, uh, because he said, okay, we're going to give them something to think about from now on. And so he started running that and said, okay, okay, that's pretty much unstoppable, but let's throw my offense in too. You got to, they got to plan for his offense too. So it was like a, a damn, if you do damn, if you don't, you had two offense you had to plan for. And it drove, I guarantee it drove defensive coordinators crazy because not only are you preparing for Bobby Petrino's, uh, whatever you run, Defense you run, he's going to call his beaters, but you're also preparing for this pistol formation where this guy is having to read options and read this and read that. So you're you're spending you're you're thinking, wow, it's not enough time in the day. I guarantee you some of those defensive coordinators broke rules as far as time trying to prepare for Lamar. 
You know, um, it's funny that you talk about Bobby Petrino adjusting his offense for Lamar Jackson. Uh, I asked Josh Gaddis this week, how much have you changed Mm -hmm. the last couple weeks? I mean, we're obviously seeing this reborn TVD. He looks like, you know, Tyler Van Dimes of last year all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And there's a great assumption out here in the Canes Nation that Josh Gaddis has changed all kinds of stuff. And I don't know if he's telling me the truth or not. He said, I haven't changed anything. We're running the same stuff. Uh, we're just executing it much better. Hmm, okay. Are you seeing a different offense, Lamar? Coach Thomas? Well, I can tell you this. It kind of goes back to that conversation that they had where the quarterback said, we're spending more time together. So basically, they're they're going over plays that, and hopefully, I'm not in the, I'm not in the meeting room, so I can't say this for, for sure. But Josh is saying, okay, these are the plays we're going to run, right? And and quarterback is saying, yeah, I like this one, this one. I don't like this one, Coach. I don't feel comfortable running it. Okay, let's snatch it out. Okay. What about this one right here? Oh, I like that one. What about this one? Mm-mm, I don't feel comfortable. I can't do that turn. Okay, let's take it out. So they're coming to some type of compromise. He don't want to admit it, but they have to do that because you, you don't want to call plays – not to the kid's strength. You're you're actually killing yourself just because you like to play. The quarterback is the one that's on the field. He has to like it. Your receivers, your O-line, your your tight ends, all those guys have to like it. They have to see some type of execution on that play during the week for you to feel comfortable calling it and for those kids to feel comfortable on the field when it's called. And, and and you got Young stepping up big time in the last two games. Gee, I wonder why. And then you got Latson who stepped up. No, so how about that? You guys have helped him, and Mallory mm-hmm. before he got hurt looked better. So that there's a reason why he's passing is better because he's got guys catching the ball now. I don't even think Young's dropped the ball. He's made some really tough catches. Hey, let's really not jinx him. Catches. Let's not jinx him. That's that's the thing that I said about uh, him uh, him him making plays um down the field contested catches. Yeah, and that that's refreshing because we haven't seen that this year. So you know, I, I'm excited about the changes that they've made, but they have to continue to get better. You know, don't rest on those laurels. I hope that Josh isn't sitting back smoking a stogie saying, yeah, we've made it because you haven't. Virginia <laughs> Tech was not a good team. I don't think so. Hey, Gary, do you know who's coming back this week? Just as a quick aside, who's coming back to play? They haven't said, but there's a lot of them that are coming back. Okay. Good. Um, several of those injured guys will be back. Right, um, what about what about Mallory? What was his I think he'll be out there. Okay, good. I think he's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of guys coming back. I think Ja'Kai Clark will be back at center. Um, I think you'll see, I, I believe, Redding again. and, and Parrish? Uh, I think you might see Parrish again, yes. Uh, the, most of those guys have been uh, pointing towards coming back uh, mm-hmm. th- this weekend. Um, hey, a guy just popped in, into the green room. And uh, he had a son that played for the University of Miami, who used to say, man, I wish I used to play in the day when Lamar Thomas was out here. <laughs> I would have loved to just tackle that guy. Um, but he never got that opportunity. And that, of course, is Mr. Randy Bethel. Welcome to the Lamar hey. Thomas Show. How are you, sir? I'm good, guys. How y'all doing, man? Good hey, Randy. You. Long time, long time, man. How you doing? I'm blessed, brother. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing really good. Still hanging around with Mark Caesar, but I'm still doing good. <laughs> Bear, how you doing, Bear? Mr. Bear. Well, oh, hey. How's everything? You're hanging? It's good. It's good. Hey. Uh-oh, we're losing him a little bit. He's locking, he's locking up a little bit, yeah. Come on, kick him back in. See what Randy, happens. yeah, what um Get out of it and, and, and come back in, and then we'll 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 bring you back on. All right, um, another good guy. <laughs> yeah, um, but anyway, so um, let me just get him out of. Um... He was frozen. Oh wait, he, I, I think he's unfrozen. I, he looks like he's moving to me. We'll try. We'll try one more time. All right, he's 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 working on it. Um, but anyway, so um, you know, another thing I want to talk to you about, Lamar, is that. Um, you talked about having to drive all over town mm-hmm. to try to find a place to watch the game. And that's a dilemma 
that I've heard from a lot of fans. And, you know, this Miami just got its game time for Virginia, which is the game after Duke, and it's a, a similar, 1230 on regional sports networks. That's going to be three straight weeks. The Miami Hurricanes are out of the main loop of the ACC broadcast schedule. Um, is that a little bit of a too severe of a penalty for losing to Texas A&M, Middle Tennessee, and North Carolina? Ooh, that one in the middle, that's like an Oreo cookie. That Middle Tennessee boy, oof, that might have been the one that took him over the edge, though. I mean, that – I mean that it's just amazing that we can't get the games down here. The 12 30 game. I mean, it's it's just amazing. But you know, hey, you're not playing well. And if, just think if they would have lost to freaking Virginia Tech, we would have been playing on PBS for sure. You know? <laughs> so I mean, it, it's just you know, it, it's 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 all part of it. Everything is about money. You know that, Gary. It's about money, and it's about you know, we're you gotta win games. You know, you got to win games. That's that's what it boils down. You can't be beat by teams that you're paying five hundred thousand dollars to. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to win those games, man. And so, you know, we can we can cry over the Texas A&M game, we can cry over the North Carolina North Carolina game, but hell, we we we, we that that Middle Tennessee won't be forgotten this whole year. I don't, you know, you got to win some games to to get that sour taste out of our mouths so as fans. Mm-hmm. You know that that's that's what it's about. I mean, I I, I get regardless. You know, I'm gonna always wear my UM stuff, but everywhere I go, it's like, oh, good game. But man, we lost to Middle Tennessee. I'm like, bro, why'd you bring that up? I was having good. I was having a good day until you brought that up. So, <laughs> uh, that's Randy's getting his picture to. back. But first, let's take a moment and let's hear from our friends at Canesware. Welcome, Welcome to Canesware. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has all the latest merchandise for the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Inner Miami Soccer, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of I-595, or online at Canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. All right, let's see if we can keep them back in here. All right, Randy, you're back with us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm back. There you go. There you go. How you doing, Mr. Bear? <laughs> hey, LT, I'm good, man. I'm good. How you doing? Um, I'm I'm doing great, and I'm especially doing great because you, for the first time, you did not call me by the freshman name that you guys gave me. So I appreciate that. Thank you so and, much. And what was that name? I'm not. I don't want to talk about it, sir. I don't. I don't really want to talk about it. You guys. You, I could not wait for you guys to leave so I could give myself my own nickname. And that's what I did. <laughs> because I could not wait for y'all to leave because y'all tortured me as a freshman. I, I actually, I, I knew you guys liked me, but I, I, I questioned it some days because you. Hey, hey we, we, we loved you. That's why, that's why we had to give it to you. <laughs> What was his nickname, Mr. Weight Room? <laughs> no, that, that definitely was not it. <laughs> well, Lou, Lou Ferrigno? <laughs> it, it was along those lines. They they got me pretty good on that one. I mean, when you give a nickname, it's uh, it sticks and it, it stuck until they left. When they left, come on, come on Lamar, spill it, man. You you humiliated yourself with the story about your your webcam at the beginning of the show. You can at least tell us the nickname. He told us once before, but we well, forgot. Bear, I think Bear froze up again, so it, 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 I would let Bear tell it. But he, I think it, Bear, you froze up again. Yeah, Thank he froze. Did. He froze again. I go back outside. That's where he was doing good outside. <laughs> yeah. So those guys, man, they gave me the nickname Fats. What, was it? what is it? Fats. Fats. Fat. Fats. F A T S. Fat. <laughs> See, and look how he's laughing. And it was, no, it was no fat. And and and, the, and and here's the thing. So Twiggy, Twiggy would have co- been better. I, I coached with, I coached with, with uh, Bernard Clark, up at Hampton University, and the guy called me Fats, and I said, bro, I'm not 18 years old, bro. Okay, stop calling me that. 
I go to Roland <laughs> Smith when he's coaching at uh when he's coaching at Central, and I they say, Hey, coach, uh Coach Thomas is here to see you. Oh, fast, yeah, tell him to come on back. <laughs> Bro, I'm that, you gotta let that go, man. We don't we don't go by it's Coach Thomas, man. It's Coach Thomas. Hey man, you you always be fast to us, man. That's the love. C four L, baby. C four L. You know what, man? And it was always be there. You're you're a guy. You're you're Bear. You're a guy that that. that, you're you're a guy that came to the University of Miami and you changed positions. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, it it was an interesting story, man. Uh, I came as a uh, a linebacker. Uh, We had some injuries at DN. Butch Davis told me, "Hey, come on down, man. Let's uh, let's let's do this." And um, I don't know why this flight keep going off. Anyway, so um, I went to DM for that spring, right at, you know, in my fresh at the end of my freshman year, and had a great great spring. Willis McGee and myself were battling out, and, and we were right there. So Butch was like, "Hey, you know, when you come back to camp by two forty five, I think we'll be good to go." And uh, so I packed my pounds on, did what I had to do. Got back to camp. <laughs> true, this is true story. Got back to camp, and um, we're getting ready to do the one ten test. And someone says, "Hey, man, uh, Coach Johnson wants to see you." I said, uh, "Shit, what, what, did, what did I do? What's going <laughs> on here?" And we're getting ready to run the one ten test. One ten test is serious. Lamar, you know how, to, how serious oh, yeah. that test is. Oh yeah. And so he says, um, uh, I'm going to talk to you in a little bit. He says, uh, Donnie, take him outside. So Don Solinger takes me outside in the rain and starts throwing footballs at me. And I played tight end in high school as well. So I'm catching it, tucking it away naturally, not saying a word. And um, I look upstairs and I see Jimmy looking downstairs at us from his office. And uh, and Don gives him the thumbs up, and I'm like, man, man, what what did that mean? What's going on, Coach? He says, well, uh, you know, Coach Johnson thinks that uh, you you're gonna really be a big help for us at tight end. I said, what? I said, dude, I just put on all this weight. I've been training for this 110 test. That was what I was most worried about was the 110 test, oh, yeah. because one, the DNs ran at at 19. Tight ends had to go at 17. Oh. And I'm like, man, two second difference. You know, I put on 20 pounds already. <laughs> you know, this could be an issue. <laughs> but, you know, I, I saw what happened to some of my other teammates who did not pass the 110 test. Ooh. So I'm like, hey, you know what, God, hey, God is you and me. Help me through this. And uh, and I think I finished all 17 of them in, in probably 15, 16 seconds. Did, did you hear and what he the, said? It, it was supposed to be 16, but he finished 17 of them. It's 17. I, yeah, I'm going to run an extra. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a true story. True story. I mean, with no warning, no nothing. Come on, you're going to play tight end now. Hey, it worked. Yeah, it wasn't no it worked. worked. Yeah, hey, man, you yeah, had hey. a great cotton ball. Yeah, and, hey, worked. Hey, and, and how did you how did you feel about – because you were there the same time I was when Dennis came in. You know, what was your thought process on, on – you know, Coach Harrison coming in because I know a lot of us, like myself, we were kind of fuddled by the whole thing. Like, whoa, whoa, who is this guy, and what, he's coming from where? And huh? Yeah, it, it was uh, definitely an adjustment um, phase for for all of us, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember we, again, we we're outside with Coach Roll running, running, running one tens again, and uh, this guy just kind of wanders out on the field. And we're like, who who is that down there with this ugly plaid jacket? Oh, on. it was ugly. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> and uh, he just kind of walked, making his way out on the field. And we just ran right by him. A couple of us brushed up on him, you know, like, <laughs> man, who are you? And uh, we get back down on the other end. And I, I remember Coach Rose saying, hey, man, you know, that's, uh, that's, our, that's, our, that's our new coach. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, well, hey, whatever. It is what it is. But, you know, I was uh, – it didn't bother me very much, man. I think, um, you know, Jimmy had trained us so so well to just mm-hmm. get the job done. It didn't matter who was calling the plays, what was happening. This was the University of Miami. We're gonna we're gonna whoop you. Period. Hey, Bab, do you remember um, 
as you were talking, I, I went back in my memory bank. I used to come in y'all room a lot. Uh, yeah, you did. And, uh, Looking for food, G. probably. Well, I used to wash the dishes. G. I washed the dishes. Yeah. I washed the dishes. They love to see me come. I was a freshman. I washed the dishes because I told them it made my hands soft. So they didn't mind me coming to their room. Come on. Most most freshmen couldn't come in there, but they said, come on in, Fats. Come on in. Come on in. You know, we know what you're coming to do. Come on. We we, we always have some dishes for you. <laughs> now, 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 Randy, I mean, you were you're in a, a you played at the University of Miami and right. you were able to you know, obviously you you had kids and you had you had a a, a, a son attend the University of Miami. What was that like? What was that? What was that feeling being recruited by the University of Miami? And th- talk about the recruiting part. We don't talk about him playing not yet. Let's talk about the recruiting part of and the and what you felt. Yeah, you know, man, it was um, it was surreal. It was it was like, hey, you know, I've been coaching this kid for years, mm-hmm. and when he got into high school. Um, I pulled away from it completely and let him be coached by other people. I would still do things, you know, around the yard or whatever, or just he and I, you know, somewhat one-on-one. But, um, you know, after his, probably his ninth grade year, he started getting attention. And uh, at that time, um, Randy Shannon was at uh, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously everybody knew, you know, knew how, how close Randy and I were and still are. Um, and after his sophomore year, we moved, well, after his freshman year, we moved to Vero Beach. He had a great sophomore season. And Randy, I think, was his first or second um, D1 offer. His first SEC for sure. But um, his first major D1 offer. And after that, it just, it just snowballed. And then Hurley Brown, who was at my coaching at Miami at the time, um, jumped on board, and um, you know they made the offer. And you know it was it's one of those things, you know, because you deal with 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 the mama at home, who's mm-hmm. saying, well, you know, I don't care where my baby go, I just want him to get a good education, and you know, and that sounds good, man. That's that's great for a newspaper, but <laughs> I, I, nobody wanted to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. I'm like, you know, just be quiet. Leave him alone, and he'll make the right decision. Right, you know. So uh, it, it was a process, man. We uh, we visited Miami. Um, well, our first trip actually was at to to Auburn, mm-hmm. and uh, the, you know that was a great trip. We had a great time. Uh, then we went to Miami, and then uh, his mom uh, went along with him, just him, uh, to the uh, University of Tennessee, and um, they had a great time. It was actually on his birthday. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh man, damn! I might, I might have made a mistake right then, uh, letting him go, you know, <laughs> on his birthday with with the mama, right? You know, but uh, he came back and he was like, uh, he, you know, he's a real quiet kid, and he's like, um, yeah, I think I'm about ready to make my decision. And I just, oh. I left him alone. I didn't even say anything to him. I let him announce it however he wanted to, and um, you know, the rest was, uh, the rest was history for us. Yeah, and um, so. So Pat graduated in 20, was in the program during Mark Rick's time uh, predominantly. And, uh, you know, how, how did uh, – talk about your experience as, as, as a parent during that time. Uh, I mean, we could probably assume that, like, maybe it didn't go as great as you guys probably uh, wanted it to in that period that he was there. Uh, talk about what your viewpoint as a parent was uh, during that period. Well, um, you know, when, when you say it, it didn't go great, um, it's hard for former players mm-hmm. to to deal with that and, and to um, make that make sense. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like my class that came in, um, that, that group of, of guys who some of us played five years uh, only lost three games in five years. Mm-hmm. So how do we relate greatness <laughs> with kids who are playing right now, or mm-hmm. kids who played five years ago? It, it's 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 a uh, it's an unfair comparison, and it's hard for us as former players to sometimes get a, a good understanding of that because 
great to us is putting a ring on your finger at the end of the year. And then going right back to work two weeks later Mm -hmm. and get ready to do it again. That's great. His experience uh, was was outstanding. It was out of this world. Um, It helped him become even a a stronger young man uh, on and off the field. Uh, I'm, I'm super proud of him, super proud of all my children, my daughter and my, and my younger son. Um, but it, it helped develop him as a young man. It was a great experience. And, um, you know, he actually moved positions as well from defensive end to defensive tackle. And again, uh, it was one of those situations where, you know, the numbers were down at tackle. We needed help. And he went through a, a spring at maybe – 250 pounds playing D tackle. Uh, and he was playing behind McIntosh at the time. And uh, next thing I know, he's 285, 290, mm. uh, and playing nose and taking on double teams all game, um, you know, and, and allowed the, I can't remember the other tackle's name at the time, number nine. Um, can't, I forget his name. Norton. Um, was not Norton. Norton. Norton was seven. Uh, yeah, Norton was seven. It was number nine. Um, he transferred from Florida. What was his name? Oh, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, Gerald Willis. Yeah, Willis. Willis. That light. Did we lose Randy again? Or no, I think he's we... still there. The light's just going on and off on him. That light. To imagine that. There he is. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right, and um. And so I'm watching him, especially the uh, the LSU game we played out in uh, in Texas. And he's ta- he made a few good plays, and you know he's taking on double teams and allowing this other guy to, you know, to play the three and and to make plays, and it and it worked well. Um, so I was super proud of him, man. I'm like, hey, keep your weight up, do what you got to do, and just remember when this football stuff is all over, you better lose that weight, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so has he? He, he's done extremely well. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's doing well uh, in his career. Uh, he's working out, you know, he's down to probably maybe 260, 265, somewhere up in there. But he looks great. Uh, he's, he's very, very healthy. Uh, he's doing a great job. So, yeah, I, I can't complain. That's awesome. So, so, so let me ask you this. Um, does it, you're, if you're a legacy player, do you and you have a son who's a good football player? Do you have a responsibility to the U to send your kid to the U? We have, we have a situation right now with uh, Tolbert Bain's nephew who's driving them crazy. He's he's being romanced by everybody. Alabama, Auburn. He's one of the top defensive ends in the country. Miami obviously wants him very badly. Uh, his brother is on the staff at Miami. Uncle Tolbert played at Miami. The Bain family has been entrenched in the University of Miami for a few decades now. Um, do they have a responsibility to send Ruben to the U? Uh, and how do you manage that a- as a parent? Um, as a parent or a family member, uh, like Tolbert is right now, um, you, you manage it by allowing the kid to see it, to see greatness. And not not beating him over the head with it, you know, but still trying to impress upon him. Hey, man, you you know, you got to make your own way. It is what it is. I'm with you 100% wherever you go, which is true. But uh, the, the kid knows. I didn't have to tell my son, oh, man, hey, you know, you got to go to Miami. I didn't, I didn't have to say that. Um, I, I just showed him. He was He was exposed to it at a young age. He was with me when we did some of the, the very first uh, championship reunions that were, you know, out at local restaurants and stuff. Uh, he was with me at games. He was with me at the Orange Bowl. He stood, at, you know, when Sebastian blew the smoke down on the sideline, you know. So it was it was in his blood. It was naturally, he, it was going to come out of him, period. You know, so I didn't have to worry about that. But, you know, it is a sticky situation because uh, now and, and – Coach can tell you, I mean, recruiting has changed so much now. It's changed so much. Everybody wants to, you know, get up in front of the camera and uh, put four or five hats up there and take one on and put one on and take it off. And, you know, 
pull the Houdini action. Nobody got time for all that. It's time to play football, man. So, you know, you get kids who are doing that, you know, I, I don't know, you know, if, if, if I don't know, it's, it's the recruiting is just hard. So how, how do you compete with that? How, how do you compete with that? What I'm telling kids is, hey, University of Miami is, is the best place in the world. It's the best place in the world. And I have the same issue now because I coach high school kids. Mm -hmm. So and these kids and, and you know, believe it or not, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm a D line guy, you know. The D line is D line is my, is my specialty. Um, not offense, not tight ends, defensive line. And um, I've been fortunate enough to to put a lot of kids in college. Jafar Harvey is one of my kids. Pat Bethel was was obviously my kid. So uh, you know, we we've sent kids from my, from my high school to the University of Miami. Dwayne Horlett was one of our kids. He didn't stay, but he was still a Bureau kid. Um, you know, I have a kid at Florida now. I have a kid at Alabama. You know, so, yeah, it was, it was. Um, I think I felt more pressure. Uh, my kid, Keanu Kuhn, who uh, signed with Alabama, I think I felt more pressure from some of the staff members with him. Yeah, he was a hell of a player. Yeah, hey, hey, man, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, I thought we had a chance. Thought we had a chance. I'm like, look, man, I'm I'm on this kid every day, you know, but <laughs> it, it, it's difficult, and and that was more pressure for me than it was with my son or with Jafari. Lamar Selwyn Brown's another one. His son's at American yeah. Heritage now. Miami's recruiting him yep. very hard to come as a DB. I think he's coming. Hey, hey, Bear. Hey, I need you to do me one favor. Ask me, say, hey, hey, Bane, say, hey, Bane, what, what you think about uh, your nephew coming? Just ask that to me. Just ask. <laughs> hey, Just ask. hey, uh, hey, hey, Tolbert, what, what, what do you think about your nephew, man? Are we gonna get him? Is he coming to Miami or what? <laughs> man, I don't even know, man. I'm around this thing. <laughs> Hell, shit. I just seen the man up there. I said, shit. Show that man what he's supposed to get around him now. You know how we did it back there. <laughs> See, I had Melvin down there last night. Playmaker oh, came too. That was great. That's great. There's a lot of accuracy to that. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is exactly what he would be saying. Yeah, that's scary. And how he would say it, that sounded like him too. Yeah, it really that's how Tolver talks. That's funny. That's him. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it, I it, didn't do it, any other voices. <laughs> a couple. I got a couple. I had to, I had to watch I had to watch them guys, man. Them guys, man, they wanted to they wanted to they wanted to do some things to me. So I had to I had to I had to say some things just in case. They they were trying to do some things to me. I had to run from them a couple of times, hide from them. You know, they, yeah, they do I, I hear it from them. You know, I never told you, man. I that ledge on the third floor. On the ledge. I was skinny enough to slide up on that ledge. Y'all looked out the window. Y'all never looked down and saw me. I was out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were coming the, to cut the, my hair. The, 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 li the, life, the life of hurricanes in Building 36. Oh, man. Yeah. That, 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 you know. That, that's some stories. We need to write a book, man. Oh, man. No, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, in, in case you viewers don't understand, there was a building that we all lived in. Uh, it was our football dorm. Uh, it was building 36 mm -hmm. and it was a piece of shit. It was trash. <laughs> it was, it, it was, was bad. a bad play. It was when I came on my visit. Uh, hey, but every, I will move back in tomorrow. I, I sure would. Hey, I came on my visit everywhere else was nice and clean. They had, you know, you're going to yarn hall, the beds made, you get the building 36 people hanging out the window. It's liquor bottles everywhere. Coke 45. Oh, yeah. It's uh it's pizza boxes, people yeah. yelling oh, at, hey yeah. man, what's up, bro? Who you is? Yeah. <laughs> it was different. It was different at 36 it different now. Place. It was a it was different, different place. I, I was kind of scared to bring my parents around that thing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't bring mine. See? I'm like, no, I'll meet y'all at a restaurant. I'll, let's go across the street. Let's go to Burger King or somewhere. Can, library. Yeah, I'll meet y'all somewhere else, man. We hey, can't man, come that, that, yeah. that was a devil. No. Boy, you, didn't want, you didn't want to bring your parents. You didn't want to bring your girlfriend either, boy. Do you not to bring the bathroom, your girlfriend. Dude, don't bring her. Was, she was on limits. There ain't no off limits. She was on limits. On limits. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bell, you man. You got to be careful at 36 now. 
Hey, Beth, tell us a little bit about what you, what you got going on now. I mean, I know you, you, you've you been in the school system for a long time. I know you were over at Sebastian River. You were at Bureau for, for a while. And yes, are you at Sebastian, or do I have it reversed? You got it reversed. Yeah, I, okay. I started out at Sebastian River. Okay. And I, uh, I stayed at Sebastian River for uh, 19 years. Wow. And um, I was 16 of the 19 were, uh, I was the head coach. Mm. And uh, my son's sophomore year, uh, he, we decided to move to Vero, and we moved to Vero Beach. Uh, I got fired as a head coach, so it was an easy move for me. <laughs> and, um, you know, then I started coaching there, and I've been coaching ever since. I have a great head coach, Manny Jackowski, uh, who kind of, you know, lets me um, lets me kind of run the program and do what I need to do. Um, you know, so we're, we're getting things together. And, uh, you know, so I'm about 27 years in the system now. Wow. Um, you know, I, we've been blessed enough, man. I, um, I own some other businesses as well. I own a, uh, commercial cleaning service. I've had this for 17 years. Uh, we got about probably about 28 employees and that's, uh, that's probably why I have more gray hair now, uh, <laughs> in dealing with them. And, um, then we, uh, we also, uh, we own a cigar business. Um, we sell luxury cigars. I have mobile cigar units and, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's kind of my passion and, uh, I enjoy it. And, uh, we, we actually just, um, just finished with, um, the, the a cigar I called the hurricane mm. and wow. it, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's a Nicaraguan pure though. It has a dual wrap. Uh, it has a Maduro and a Bano, uh, and the band of the cigar. It's a beautiful cigar. I wish I had some with me. Uh, the band of the cigar is a Maduro with the Universal Miami logo in the middle in orange and green. Nice. So it took me about a year and a half to get those created. And uh, we finally got them created, and uh, we've been bringing them out to games. And um, they've been selling like hotcakes, to be honest with you. They're flying off. I can't really keep them in stock. Is it any place that, you, that, the kid, that we can go online and try to find them? Yeah, you can uh, you can just really uh, hit, hit my Instagram and, and message me, and um, I'll get right back with you. I don't do all the online marketing or any of that stuff. Hit me up on Instagram and uh, or Facebook and uh, at OTS Cigars, and you can uh, you can get them shipped right to you. Hey, 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 Bell, um, I just heard got a phone call from uh, Toba Bain. He said, Bell. Man, oh, you get my get my nephew an NLI deal. All I know is my nephew need that NLI deal from me. And he'll definitely come to the University of Miami. <laughs> hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. We appreciate oh, it. Man. Much success All my pleasure, man. Can't wait till the next pleasure. game. I'd definitely be out there in the parking lot smoking a couple with you and uh All right. we'll Look be having some good it. time. And you Look you can call me it. fast. Only you can call That's me right. fast. That's All right. That's right. I'm gonna send I'm gonna send some cigars back for my guys too. Appreciate it. Much love, hey. you. Randy. Right, much love. Good to you. Good seeing you, Randy. Great seeing you, man. All right, appreciate it. Oh, Randy yeah. Bethel. <laughs> Just a great person. I love Randy. He had a great game in that sugar bowl, man. You're right. right. You brought no, that cotton up. Cotton bowl, too. Cotton, cotton, cotton bowl, yeah. Cotton I mean, it was a cotton. And, yeah, 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 and the sugar bowl. Too. He was good. I mean, he was just, um, I think, who do we have? Chud Zinsky. He was the same. He was they, When we lined up double tight, those two guys were our tight end. And Randy could run. He was much faster than um, than Chud. Oh, yeah. But Chud was more the possession type. Yeah, he had, he had a – he had this number was 93. That was 93. Number. That's correct. Yeah. 93. Number, you know? Yes. Tight end. It wasn't a tight end number. No, it was tight end, he, like a D lineman number. But 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 like most of the numbers we had, we made them into what they were. How yep. about that? That's for sure. LT Zach Lesnar has a question for you. All right. Uh, one of our listeners, do you think the lack of depth and injuries have completely derailed this year? Zach, I don't think it's derailed the year. I mean, it depends on what your what your thoughts were coming into the year, you know, obviously uh, for people like myself who know the program and, and been around the program, got to see the program. I wasn't expecting a lot. I was just, but I, I definitely was not expecting middle Tennessee state. Now let's make sure we understand that. Uh, but I wasn't expecting 
uh, them to be world beaters because I also understood they don't have a lot of depth. And when you have injuries forcing you to play other people, these guys are coming up, but they are getting experience, so it will help you down the line. But I wasn't expecting, you know, I was I, I said in the beginning maybe four losses, and some people looked at me a little crazy. Um, I love the program, but I'm a realist too. I mean, he, he has he has a lot of holes to fix, and they're showing this year. And you know, it's also you bring in a new staff. We the staff and the players have to get to know each other. They have to be on the same page. You know, as we talked about earlier, the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, they got to be able to call plays based upon what their players can do. If your guys can't run, you don't call press. You know, if you guys, you know, they, they're, they're fast guys, then you can call press or, or vice versa. On, you don't throw deep balls if you guys can't run. You know, it's, it's, it is it is what it is. So I think everything has been a learning process this year, and they still have a, a ways to go. There still are holes that need to be fixed. So, we're just going to continue to hopefully get better. But but I'll chime in. I do agree with it, with what he said to a certain extent. When you lose Citizen, Restrepo, and Zion Nelson, you lost a lot. It might not be a big number, three, but those three guys are really important to this team. Knowing that they weren't going to play that much, if at all, this year, that's a big loss. I could see three or four losses or maybe five losses without those guys. But, you know, Dennis Lopez brings up the question, Lamar, about – adapting to the problems that the receivers were having early by simplifying their routes, simplifying their responsibilities. Um, is that what you've seen when you've watched the game or have they simplified the game for the receivers? Well, it, it, his offense is a downfield offense. I mean, I, I saw that from the little bit of time that I sat in the meeting and watched the plays that they were trying to run in practice. I'm like, man, your old line has to be pretty damn good because, you know, you got to be able to block. To, to be able to throw those downfield passes. Not really as many bubble screens as we were used to seeing over the last couple of years of quick passes. It's all kind of predicated off the run game, but if your run game ain't worth the shit, then you got issues. We yeah, have issues. That's, or, or your run game, or your guys fumble. I mean, that's, yeah. it, it takes, now he has to make a decision to say, okay, do I want to continue to do this and these guys fumble or one guy fumbles or whatever it is, in key situations or do I throw the ball? So he's had to make some adjustments himself and it's all a learning process. I mean, you know, regardless, the guy, we brought the guy in, he's supposed to be a good coordinator. I think in times it's shown and him and the quarterback has been on, on the right page. It's just uh, those times that it didn't show that's the sour taste in everyone's mouth. But remember, everybody's still growing. You know, I think they got rid of, Rooster running the ball on short yardage by putting in right. Corey Brown. They made that adjustment. They realized they can't let him put the ball on the floor anymore. He's and he's he's a fumbler. I, I like what Jay Daphne said. I don't believe everyone expected Mario to cook a five star meal with another chef's groceries. <laughs> I like that. That's a good I like point. That. I but like I, that, I but I personally like what Jason C is saying. He loves that nickname you have, Lamar Fats. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you can't call me that, dog. On it, on it. Okay, it, it, no, nah, it ain't cool, man. You don't, you don't understand. It ain't cool, Chris. It ain't cool because it, it. They even made me put it on my on a on a sweatshirt I had, man. They made me. They said you got to wear this. I mean, they, that's how I must say it, it was. They. Okay, bad who's they. Who's they? Who's they? There's, there's got to be just a few. Not no, everybody. It no, it, it, guys. Leon Cersei to this day calls me fats. Okay. Okay. And he, he he's just too big for me to swing on him. Okay. <laughs> uh Roland Smith, I hate it coming to Central because fats, they come in fats. Bro, I, it's it's kids in here, bro. Don't call me that in front of the kids. Uh Bernard Clark, uh Randy Bethel, uh Darren Handy. I mean, Darren uh Handy. uh uh AJ, look, AJ, look, Alex Johnson, one of the greatest, one of the nicest guys, fats. Come in, let me let's walk to class, fats. <laughs> bro i'm not fat so i'm lamar fat you I'm lamar. might have weighed 100 pounds back then yeah they, they put an s on it to make it sound better fats fats come here fats let's go to the calf fats <laughs> so it, it was Great some name. guys that called it i mean it's it, it, it is what it is well, it's, now it's, you got a new name coach fats well no 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 it's coach thomas coach Tom. lt or coach thomas 
Okay. What are you gonna What are you gonna have him call you when you get Coach to LT, Orlando? Coach Thomas. I mean, I mean, it, LT. I mean, I I don't really care. I mean, obviously, I'm from a different era where we call guys coaches. We call them coach. I mean, that's what uh, when I got to the NFL it was the first time I heard somebody call a coach by their first name, and I was like, what? You know, hey, hey, David. And I'm I'm with Horace Copeland in the back. We like, did he just call him David? <laughs> you know, we we you know, hey, 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 Sam. I'm like, you call the man? Sam? It's Coach Coach Weiss. No, you're in the pro now. You making money, bro? You call him by their first name. I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. So it for a long time, man. It took a long time for me to call. I still call Coach Johnson. I never called him Jimmy except for one time. <laughs> except for one, after luck. after. After the three touchdown Monday night game, I said, "Hey Jimmy, give me that money, dog." <laughs> um, LT, let's talk about Duke for a minute. Um, right. You know, everyone just assumes ah, Duke. We're gonna be like, like we haven't learned our lesson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, like it's not just hey, we're playing Duke Saturday. Um, Duke has it used to be. Great... It used to it used be, be yes. Yeah. But Duke has done a great job getting their program back on track under Mike Elko this year, Lamar. Yep. Uh, they are playing very good football. They are going to be a very tough out on yeah. Saturday at Hard Rock Stadium. And um, Miami has been made a nine-and-a-half-point favorite in the game, um, which seems like a lot of points to me, wow. um, you know, when you factor in everything that's been going on. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a very tight game. And a very good one. They have a good quarterback. They, they they have a good offense. And they have an edge, Lamar, that I want you to comment on. Um, they've got Jess Simpson coaching their defensive line. They've got uh, Coach Is Ishmael, um, who was the linebacker coach last year, mm -hmm. coaching their linebackers. And they got David Feely, who was the strength coach at Miami for mm -hmm. so many years. He's their strength coach. Mm -hmm. They know Miami's personnel, Lamar. Backwards, yeah. forwards, and sideways. Mm -hmm. yeah, Personal. Yeah. What, what what impact does that have on the game? Well, I've been on the sideline of another team, um, you know, leaving Louisville to go to Kentucky. It, it, you, it knowing the personnel is always great, but knowing the plays is even better. <laughs> but you know, um, you, you know, you can you can talk about these guys but you don't really know how much they've in how much they've gotten better or worse you know you can say hey i just want you to know that guy he's not that fast and obviously if they watch film and he can't i remember he can't cover this or he can't do this or he can't do that and it still might be the same way so there is to have that personal relationship with these guys and and to know what they can and can't do is it's important but at the same time, it's not the plays. The offensive coordinator changes. It's, it's you know, I, you would rather know the coordinators than know the players, you know, because now you have that edge. The players sometimes can change a little bit. They can get stronger. They can get mature over, you know, over a year, over a summer. They can get bigger. You know, they can get faster, you know, but those, those coordinators – pretty much stay on the same, you know, it's kind of like what coach Steele said about um, coaching against um, who was that? He was saying against coaching against um, Texas and m He said, it's still, what, what's that coach name? Jimbo. Um, Jimbo. Jimbo's Jimbo's Jimbo. offense. Yeah. It's still Jimbo's offense. So, you know, they, he's coached against a guy many, many times, you know, so it, it, it's different, but having that little edge, that psychological edge to tell the kids, Hey, he's not that good. It could have an effect, but at the end of the day, it'll be thrown out the window by about third quarter. Yeah, they're coming off a tough loss. But, you know, they, those guys don't know Ladson. They don't know Young. They don't know Parrish. There's a lot of – they don't know our defensive guys up front. They're relatively new guys. So I don't give that much credence. They're, they're a better prepared mm -hmm. team. They played hard. They're going to play us hard. And, you know, we just can't show up or not show up. We've got to – Make this game to be the biggest game of the year because they all are going every forward. game, every game, Everybody. every game since that freaking middle yeah. Tennessee state game. Yep, becomes a, a, a must win for you because uh, you got to we got to get that taste out of the mouth, you know, for our fans. And as we well know, um, 
it's going to take a while. And, you know, that's yeah. just the nature of the beast down here. That, but don't you, know, you agree, LT, that had they beaten North Carolina, that may have been forgotten. They'd be 1-0 in the ACC, looking forward to Duke. You're never going to forget that stupid loss, but it would have been much different, in, in my opinion, had they beaten North Carolina. And they would be right up there at the top. They'd be a game ahead of North Carolina with mm-hmm. Duke and Virginia. You know, and I got Georgia Tech later on. Pitt's not that good this year. They'd be in the driver's seat, but they're not. Because uh, of that. Did, did you forget about FIU? Have you forgotten about FIU? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about them. That was a long time ago already. <laughs> no, and, that, and that was good. So, you know what? I didn't mind it much because I <laughs> No, it wasn't. <laughs> Shit, that hurt. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> That was awful. Mm-hmm. I never go. I'll never go to a baseball game in that stadium ever. <laughs> Did you ever. see what what Butch is doing now? What is he's, Butch doing? He's like he's working as like an analyst at one of those small programs up in North. I think it, it, I don't know if it's Florida Memorial mm-hmm. or or one of those. Um, there was another one that was started at um, Saint, oh, Saint Thomas. Saint Thomas University yes. started a football yes. program too. Yes. That might yes. be the one he's working at. Yes, he is. And Butch That's- is sitting up there. Uh, on game day, when who I don't even know who they're playing, and he's up. They they have their their coaching box is on a a lift, like they have one of those like lifts that they use to film practice, and he's sitting up there on a seat uh, with like a walkie talkie or something, and <laughs> and he's working as an analyst, you know, uh, just to stay in it and have something to do. And I I talked to Coach Davis. I saw him for a little bit at the. 87 reunion and he told me about it and he said man i just love the game you know i i gotta be around the game that's it i gotta be around the game i'm just i'm enjoying life i think his son might be doing something over there too so i think his son um, is on the staff yeah. there, so yeah. you know he's just being around the game and those guys are lifers they've been in the game a long time um you know just like dennis you know I, i'm hoping coach Harris is playing golf somewhere but not at this time but uh but you know i'm because they're, they're just lifers, man. They just love the game. They've been around it a long time, and it's hard for them to say, I'm going to walk away and, and watch it on TV. Yeah, for sure. So they, they, they probably go through about three or four TVs a, a, a season. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be joined in a minute by Bishop Kenny Berry, but uh, he's got his cap on his webcam right now like Lamar did earlier today. <laughs> I'm, waiting, oh, I'm waiting for a picture. All right, we got it. Here he is. The bishop is in the house. <laughs> How we doing, gentlemen? How we doing? How you doing, Kenny? I'm Corbett. doing great. I'm good. Doing great. Good to see you. Oh man, good to see you guys as well. LT, what's up, baby? See, okay, see, uh, you did just like see, see, do your see, Colbert, I, do your see, Colbert I, impression. See, I love the way y'all y'all give me respect because you know this, me and this man have a lot of history. But I'm gonna start off by saying I love the way you you know you didn't call me fats. So, <laughs> Um, I leave that with TB. <laughs> see, see, see. He didn't call me fast, but what he did do to me, oh come on, almost man. made me transfer <laughs> because he his freaking handprint still in my chest. That's why my chest never developed. I almost wanted to leave school because this man owned me. My freshman year, I couldn't get off the jam. I, I I think I cried a couple times in my helmet, <laughs> and every time he'd get up there, he you know he was he was long. And so he, I would be in a three-point stance, and I would just look up, and I'd say, this ain't going to be, ain't gonna be good. And sure enough, I end up on my back or his hand in my chest and knock the wind out of me. And, and the receiver coach at the time, Coach Alexander, said, boy, you ain't going to never play here. <laughs> coach Hub, man. Coach Hub. Coach Hub. One time for Coach Hub Alexander. But, yes, you, know, you, were, you, were, you were such a tough competitor, man, in that cover, too, man. I mean, you – you, it, it, I still remember the hit you hit the kid at uh, was it Missouri? Missouri, oh yeah. Oh man, I mean, what, for for you playing cornerback and to have the size was it was it easy? I mean, because it seemed like everything you did, your running and and jamming and all that, it was it looked easy. Well, you know, you, when you train, man, especially in your off season, you know, I never took a t- took seat, took off took off. You know, I really just right. when I got home, I trained. Um, and to, I had a martial art instructor, um, Jack Emanuel, where I was training with Tai Chi. So I was learning those different things as well. Um, and so when I got in, I got back home to the muck, it was on, you know, I realized I was a part of a, a very competitive unit. And so you had, you know, you couldn't come back. 
out of shape. You can't, you had to come back ready, man. So, and that's basically what I did. So it just, I had that knack, man. Just always want to be better. I mean, top, top not guy coming out of a hokey, small rural town here in the glazed area. But knowing that I was going down with those big dogs down at the U, man, had to be ready. Couldn't, you know, couldn't, couldn't slack up. Not one moment, you know, because we had such a, we built such a culture down there, man. And the guys that we had playing with us, I mean, we had second and third and fourth train guys that could have been starters anywhere else. Yep. And so, you know, we went in on, on a daily basis, man, just being prepared and ready, you know, for what's next, man. And, um, you know, LT, you know, young book, you know, trying to get us, you know, trying to get a little Scott team, you know, staying on there. But <laughs> listen, I'm working on my craft, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, do you watch the games, Kenny? Do you do you watch the games uh, this year? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, listen, it is hard, you know, think about it. After playing, I've coached for 20 years. I've I coached Aquan Bowden, you know. Mm-hmm. I've coached some great guys. You know, um, Juan Morgan over at Sun Coast. I coached those guys, man. So here it is now and looking at it. And the kids are just different these days. Mm-hmm. They're different, you know, and I hear some of the conversation that, you know, you can't really discipline these guys. And, you know, we built such a competitive nature down at the U when we was there, man, that, hey, we were going to let you slack. Mm-hmm. That was slacking was not an option. You know, you have to be ready because, you know, every man counts, you know, and our thing was next man up. If that guy that in front of you didn't get it done, next man up, baby, you know. So, but I don't think these kids really understand that, you know, and we understand they can't, they're not us. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not us. You know, we, we were in an era and a time where we literally changed football in itself. And these kids here, you know, they want to talk about the swag. You know, don't, just listen. Do what the coach will tell you to do. Take your responsibilities, you know, and don't blow coverages. That's that's the worst thing you mm-hmm. could ever do. Yeah, just blowing coverage. You should never get beat 90 some yards after you. Never. That could never happen. So... Four times in the Middle Tennessee game, two times in the North Carolina game, that happened. Kenny Berry is thinking what as he watches that? How in the world? What are you doing? What are you looking at? You know, I'm standing there from, from you know, from a coach's perspective and from a defensive back perspective. I'm looking at, you know, what are you reading? What are you looking at? You know, that if you're a safety, you don't need to be piercing down inside. You need to be standing, looking across, you know, if you have that one there in the eye looking you know, back and forth across the field and stay in deep. You know, our corners, I'm looking at these guys, they're not aggressive enough. You know, LT, no. Honestly, I taught those guys that even came in and played for me. I said, listen, you're playing football. I mean, this is the only sport you can play that can literally kill a man half the death and not go to jail for it. So why not take advantage of this opportunity and be physical? So honestly, I'm going to hit you all the way down the field and hit you coming back to your huddle. I'm going to put, listen, I'm going to etch it in your mind that, listen, you going to have the worst time of your life. And that was my mentality. You know, I had a destructive mentality because I was, you know, six, you know, six, two, six, three. I was just buck 85, but I played like I was 205. And I mean, mm-hmm. and basically I just don't love the game. And I was, I just, honestly, Tim, you turned the guy out of Missouri that I hit. Mm-hmm. I don't think you know this, LT. You know, we kind of accept him because he was taught one of Charles Farm boys, right? Mm-hmm. But when we played them in Miami the previous year, this joker sucker punched me. Mm-hmm. He sucker punched me, hit me out of my chin. I'm like, did he just hit me? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I wasn't the bishop then. I, I said, I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said a few things, that a few choice words, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, and and Tiger, I, I went to walk behind him to his huddle, and Tiger grabbed him and said, "Where you going?" I said, "That so and so, Tim, just just sucker punch me." <laughs> but I told him that game. I said, "Son, I said, boy, I don't care if it's next year on the NFL. I'm, I'm gonna kid. get you." <laughs> so I purposely. I purposely, I studied, the, I studied them. When they ran that little tight end drag across the field, mm-hmm. listen, I literally stopped, let the receiver go and stop. I know he was going to throw him that ball. And, and boy, God, you hit. Listen. Lit him up. 
He got lit up. Lit him up, Jews, the sternum, and everything else, and that to come and get him off the field. We didn't see him. No more I think, there. I think it was dudes came off the sideline and did dances over top of him. Everybody was doing something. <laughs> oh, you remember that? It was, it was ugly. It was ugly. It was loud too. They, they, oh, yeah. they whole, they whole stadium went quiet. But they, you know, and guess what happened? Right, a radio station from Missouri called me. They really? called me, and I came on. My wife and Lucy was, you know, they then. And I was at our house in that weekend there, and they called me, saying, "What kind of person are you to hit someone and dance over them?" I'm like, "This is a violent game." I say, "You got to think about this. We're young men, and this is what you know you live for during this game. When you get a big hit, you know you celebrate, you know." And I say, "Well, you got to understand. There's some things happen that you don't really know that happen. So, I mean, it happened." I say, "So go figure." <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was listen. I, I didn't play the radio back then. Me, honestly, I was looking to decapitate someone. Mike Barrow, <laughs> Mike Barrow, um, he stole my slogan because it was me that stated I wanted you know knock his helmet off his head. If his head wasn't in, I kicked the helmet. <laughs> that was my statement. <laughs> so, you can't you can't put that on your bishop robe, dog. Listen, listen, I kicked the devil's head now, brother. <laughs> You know, Kenny, you guys policed yourselves because I used to go to the practices. I would watch. I, I think Gary went. We saw how hard you guys play, how hard you guys work. But if somebody was screwing up, you didn't need the coaches to say anything. You guys got in their face. I don't know if that's happening anymore. I don't even know who the leaders are anymore. There's no leaders. You guys knew who the leaders were. You didn't need somebody to tell you, you know, don't do this. You look, these, Don't ever do that again. I mean, Leon, we used to look down the line of scrimmage. Claude, you do that again, I'm going to knock you in your ass. You don't need the coaches to say it. And that's what we did. We pulled each other. We, we, each other. Other. You know, we want to make sure. Listen, if you're going to be on that field with us on Saturday night, listen, you had to be ready to go. Yep. No slackers out there. I, we didn't care. I don't care where you, what position you was in. Honestly, if you weren't taking care of your assignment, we're going to get on you, man. But the thing about it, we competed against each other. Our best game was our practices. Mm. How funny is that? That's exactly what Leon said last night. We had him on the show. It's exactly yeah. what he said. Yeah. Our best game was our practices. Yep. And honestly, because we were so competitive. And like I said at the, at the reunion that, you know, if you check Mike and you don't, you know, he's going to catch the ball. No, okay, man. No, you got to give him, let me get some get back, you know. Brett, Brian, you know, listen, we was very competitive. We want to make sure each other was better. Mm -hmm. And we did that day in and day out, you know. I don't understand this, these kids these K days. KB, yeah. those practices also weeded some guys out. Yes. You know, and like I said, I, I actually was like in tears because I it, it was just, it wasn't, it was, it was very frustrating. <laughs> but I had to learn if I wanted to stay there. And that was the whole thing. If I wanted to stay there, I said, "Okay, I got to put my big boy draws on now." Come on now, come on. You know, and I, I got to, I got to figure this out because mm -hmm. it ain't gonna get no better oh, by no. me doing the same thing. So I got to watch, figure something out, or go to, go to Florida, go to Florida. That's the easy <laughs> but, way out. But the thing about it, we took care of each other. Yeah, what we did, if we made sure that you know you had what it takes, you know, to advance. We worked with each other is what we did. Yeah. You know, we didn't allow you to stay back there. It's like, you know, you messed up. Listen, bro. Listen, man. Pay attention to what's going on before you. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you got to always be, you know, have your eyes and ears open and paying attention. And so that, that was the thing about it. We had such a brotherhood, man. And that's why that when we come together now, it's like we were never apart. <laughs> you know, yeah. we just enjoy one another even right now. But we built such a culture. And, I mean, we had an, an identity that everybody wanted to mimic. Just think about it. Whatever we did, everybody else copied. Yeah. You know, we we were we were football, not only just in the collegiate round, but you know, honestly, we had NFL teams watching us. And I know that there was a period of time that we were trying to get a practice scrimmage with the Dolphins. Mm. <laughs> you know, and that and that brotherhood and camaraderie helped you guys on the road because I don't see these guys going on the road. And telling everybody, come on, come on. The more noise you make, we don't give a shit. Just keep talking, man. Keep talking. We're going to knock your players on their ass. That's not happening anymore. That helped you guys on the road. That's how tough you are. Listen, when we went into a stadium, 
Only thing we had was victory on our mind. We weren't concerned about no 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 top players. If they're top player, we want to make sure. Listen, we're going to see whether or not you were the top player because <laughs> we're coming after you. What about I them mean, towels? What about them towels? <laughs> we'll take, in case no. some of your viewers don't know, them, them, them top players they had their little special towels. Listen, that, go ahead and tell the KB. Listen, man. <laughs> listen, we had we we had the name already printed. We had the name already scheduled out. We already had, listen, everybody was at him. You was a target for us. That's basically what you were. You was a target. Tim and Brown. so we were going to make sure that you remember the Canes when we left. You know, <laughs> you have Cane nightmares. <laughs> hey, um, hey, Kenny, we had, um, we had Randy Bethel on earlier, and we talked a little bit about this. What was it like for you to have your son uh, go to the University of Miami and play mm -hmm. for the U? Oh, wow. I, I tell you, um, it was a tear jerker for me to see my son run out of that smoke, man. Mm -hmm. um, but I had two sons there. Yeah, that's right. I had two sons. Um, like Damien, um, who played running back, and it was kind of um, weird for him because, you know, he came in and they had, you know, recruited him as defensive back. Yes, he played safety at Suncoast, and he plays, you know, a little safety at um, at um, Glace Center as well. Um, <clears throat> transferred to Glace Center the last year. This guy ran for over 1,900 yards and um, 19 touchdowns on a bomb knee. <clears throat> um, but get into the U, um, Dr. Uribe fixed him up, got, his, got him ready, and um, Randy called me and said, um, KB, why you ain't tell me this, this boy's a running back? I said, listen, man, you the coach figure these things out, man. <laughs> and, so, and so Randy called me, they're talking, and um, – and so I told my son, I said, listen, I said, now think about it. I said, where was all your great success at? I mean, as an eighth grader, the guy ran for eight touchdowns in one game from fullback, mm -hmm. straight up the middle. Nobody can drag, tackle him. He played one year of, of, of Pee Wee, played one year of um, his juniors and one year of the seniors. And he was so big, he grew so fast that, you know, we kind of um, did a little undercover stuff there when I was coaching at Palm Beach Lakes there. But, uh, <clears throat> but he played on the junior varsity team. As an eighth grader, mm -hmm. but um, but he got down to the U man, and I, honestly, the I tell I, I had to I made the crowd say ooh and ah, but I never made the crowd scream Perry, Perry, Perry. Yeah, I mean that yeah. was yeah. a moment of a lifetime. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but you know he played. I mean, did some great things there. Ended up going to um to Baltimore and uh, winning um, the Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens there. So. Things like that, man. Honestly, that uh, you will never forget those here. But to come to the U and play at the U, where you know I had had a mate already made my mark there. Uh, my y'all, uh, my youngest son Keon, he came in and he played for 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 uh, Golden, mm -hmm. um, and he would have been honestly he was on the um, end up start traveling, and decided to go play some basketball, being bored and um, tore his knee up, mm -hmm. and so that kind that ruined it. His you know. Um, his opportunity there, but you know, both of them was there, and um, honestly, to have your kids come to the school that you played at and that you you perform well at, and they come back and they do the same thing, honestly, honestly, that's that's priceless, and um, it's, it's there's no word to ex to express, man. Um, how was the how was the recruiting process like? Were you saying to yourself, "I'm son, you got to make your own decision," but <laughs> Boy, you know you're going to school. Man. <laughs> you can take all those trips, all that stuff there, but you know where you're going. Man. And see, see, the thing about it, see, I tell, I kid you not, he grew up watching all of our videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what he did. I mean, no, honestly, he already made it made his decision up from a young age. Mm. He literally watched all of our games. He watched all mm -hmm. of our evidence. Every every highlight tape that we had, honestly, he watched it. Mm. And I mean, this what actually drove him, you know, to want to go to the U. Wow. I mean, he he was a sophomore throwing up the U. Mm. You know, not, not, but a freshman. He was throwing up the U as a freshman. He knew this year. I mean, but honestly, it, it was. Listen, there was no other school. There was no other choices, you know. And, like, I, I honestly, I know that when me come out of Pahokee, small town, you know, to 
come down to the U and make that market where, you know, you got, you know, Tim Sam, he had already come in from Blade Central a year prior mm-hmm. to that, trying to get in there. Um, yes. Then you come back, you got my son, Travis Benjamin, you know, Clyde, you know, these guys come down to the U and they uh, made Grace Rise. And honestly, you're the place to be. But I had, I listened, I had, and Corn, he was ready to come to the U. Um, Antoine Smith, he was ready to come to you. My god brother, Eric Moore, he was coming to the U. Bobby came in at the last minute. I don't know what Bobby did. I always said that Bobby came in with a briefcase and stole these guys. <laughs> well, you know, we got a couple legacy situations in recruiting this year. Um, Tolbert Bain's nephew, Ruben, is one of the best defensive ends in the country. Mm-hmm. And Selwyn Brown's son, Damari, is one of the top defensive backs out of uh, American Heritage in Fort Lauderdale. Miami's recruiting both of them. Uh, they're making them fight, Kenny. This is no le- – these aren't layups going on here. They are making uh, Mario and this staff battle like there's no tomorrow for these two kids. So here's my question. As a legacy, uh, and you have a son – um, do the legacy players have a responsibility to send their, if their son is a top player, to send them to the U? I mean, and somebody, I would say yes. The thing about this, you know, we, 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 we're a family. We're a family. And, but we want to put our kids in the best position possible for them. Mm-hmm. It's what we want to do. And knowing right now that we're in a rebuilding phase, but think about this is that our kid can come in and help be that different maker. That change maker. And I think, you know, I, I just feel that, you know, honestly, we built something there and it, it, it was a family. And so family go to help and assist family. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, last year we had the whole discussion with Earl Little and yeah. his son ended up going to Alabama. So it was kind of, uh, you know, and, you know, you can't, some guys feel certain ways. You know, it, it all depends on their experience. And, you know, some guys feel other ways. I mean, it, it was just one of those things where Earl thought that his kid would get the best opportunity at Alabama. So, you know, I, I, I wasn't mad. I wasn't mad at all because you can't be mad at someone for making their own decision. Of course. But the thing about it, just look at this year, is that Alabama was the top dog. Mm-hmm. Alabama was winning. And mm-hmm. everybody wants to be a part of a winning program. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, we, 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 we capsized, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we, we flipped the boat, you know, we flipped the Porsche, we, mm-hmm. you know, we flipped, we, 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 we didn't really, you know, keep the standard going and we've had so many losing seasons. So you got to think about it. Our kids want to be a part of winning program. Mm-hmm. Yes. They respect what we have done and yes, we want our kids to go there, go to our, you know, to the U, but these guys got to make your own decision. You know, I didn't have to tell my sons. My sons wanted to go. That's where they wanted to be at. You know, just think about it. That, you know, but you, we, they just come out of a, 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 where you had the Ed Reeds, you had the Ray Lewis, you had the Warren Sapp, you know, the Sean Taylors, you know, the Jonathan Vilma. See, that's the group that my son Damien followed. That's the group that, mm-hmm. you know, that really inspired him. So he came down at a time where, you know, the U was on high. Mm-hmm. Just think about it, you know. And I mean, in the 2001 championship, that in itself, these are the things that those kids were riding on. And UM was still peaking at that time, mm-hmm. you know. But, you know, then, you know, things kind of transitioned, kind of went south. But, you know, I would say, you know, to any one of us, I would say, listen, you know, give you a chance, you know. But if, if you don't think your son is, you know, is the right fit for the youth, send him where you want to send him at. Yeah. KB, you know, you being a bishop now. <laughs> And now, and let me make sure I got this right. Now, you ran for public office, am I correct? Yes, I am. I'm commissioner of the city of Belgrade. Okay. <laughs> commissioner of yes. city. What did your experiences at the University of Miami help in those two uh, avenues, and being a bishop and and being a commissioner? Well, I mean, it give, it gives you that intestinal fortitude, you know, and you it helped builds and a focal outlook and where that you now, you know, you can see, you know, the betterment of, of all things. You actually mm-hmm. see things and knowing that where you start out is not where you're going to end up at. Mm-hmm. And what it taught me is that, you know, I've become a, a visionary. So therefore, 
having a vision and, and knowing what, you know, what is desired. You know, mm -hmm. being a person that prays daily, I do a 5 a.m. prayer time, and I have a noonday prayer time, and I want to pray tonight when I get back on my wife. But, but you learn so many different things there. It teaches you, you know, manly qualities and things of that nature. It teaches you how to, you know, team build. And so as a pastor, and as a bishop, you got to be able to now, I work, you know, I have pastors on them. So therefore, mm -hmm. I have to learn, you know, teach them how to, you know, to work cohesively together. And I'm grateful I'm a part of a, a global um, convention, convention of um, co company and churches of three C's. Um, we're global. We do a global call um, the second and fourth Saturday where we got South Africa, we got India, we got China, we got different, you know, we're, we're spanning the globe. And we have these conference calls here, um, Zoom calls. And we get all of these pastors there and we're always trying to encourage one another. And that's what I got from the U is that <clears throat> is that we assist one another, we encourage one another and empower one another. So I've taken what I've learned there and I applied it, you know, other sectors of life. And just having that due diligence to really want to do what to, you know, just to want to be a change maker. You want to be able to, you know, cause change and effect change wherever you go at. And that's what, you know, the you. You know, I, Jimmy, start, Jimmy said this year, he said, keep the kitchen hot, you get a better performance. Keep the kitchen hot, you get a better performance. And otherwise, you don't let down your guards. You keep that fire burning and you want to make people, hey, listen, <laughs> chop, 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 you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's Jimmy. Yep. You know, take your foot off the gas pedal. Exactly. And I, I, I do that here at Grace Fellowship Worship Center. You know, the Lord allowed me to pass for over since 2005, you know, and um, and everything else I'm a part of. And that's when I, you know, I just taken everything that I've, you know, learned from the youth. Listen, the football programs. I took up a football program with, 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 with 37 kids who had never played football, only two had experience. My son, another kid. And I had one girl on the team. Wow. The Rand Christian School. You know, Larry the Cable guy, Danny Whitney, poured in a ton of money for to start the program back up over there. Wow. And I had this one girl on the team. Oh, I got to make you laugh, Lamar. <laughs> now, we open our season up with with Benny and Brian them, and Bobby them team not out of Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we open up with them. And good game and everything else. And, um, I mean, just my guys was intense everything else. We had one penalty the whole entire game. And that wow. was a rough in the passer. One penalty, discipline, wow. and now, but after we huddled up after the game, and I told a girl, Carissa, and honestly, if you look at her now, she's she's lost that weight, and I mean, she's beautiful. She's a fitness instructor, and everything else. But I told her, I said, listen, I said, no, I said, don't wear no no makeup. I said, I don't want to see no no fingering up polish, and I said, don't take that helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, cause guess what she played? She played on the defensive line. Wow. Wow. And I told her, I said, listen, these are guys. They're scrolling you up top. I said, what you do? I said, you find yourself in a struggle. I said, fall down, roll and call a pile up. That's all she did the entire game. <laughs> she battled a bit. She fall and she rolled, you know. <laughs> and so after the game, you know, she took a helmet off. Said, it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, the guy, and the guy that played in front of us said, she's good too. She's good. <laughs> <laughs> but just you know just teaching the discipline of the game in itself my right. quarterback johnny lance had never played pickup football was a basketball player but the kid led that the county you know in the first seven games of the season in wow. passing you know wow. because i took what i learned at the u wow. i ran the same defense that we ran at the u mm. <laughs> you know think about it you know and we tweak some things offensively but we just these kids, we taught them the techniques and the fundamentals that they needed. And that's one thing about me. I, you know, being a technician, I want to teach the fundamentals. Right. The fundamentals. That is so important. And I see it not only just on the high school and collegiate, but I see it in the NFL level. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to talk to there as well up at uh, with Baltimore and just talk to him about a few technical things. And that's a transform his game. The next game, boom, he got two picks. Wow. Just small things, man. Right. Small yeah. That's the things that Miami's missing now: tackling, um, blocking, getting the, getting the right signals. Oh, yeah, man, it's communication. Every little thing that goes wrong goes wrong. Yeah, communication. Man, yeah. 
Well, Bishop Barry, we, we definitely appreciate you coming on and uh, make sure you tell your lovely wife I said hello and it was such a pleasure to always see you guys at the game. You're such a happy couple. Um, <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing. I, I ain't gonna say nothing funny. I know you waiting, but you know you, you make sure you tell her I said hello. He look, he waiting for me. He waiting. I ain't gonna say nothing. Hey, listen, I, I know you're here too. Like the back of my head, I know you. <laughs> That's why they called me fast too, because they knew I'd give it right back to him. They knew I was gonna give it right back to him. But man, we definitely appreciate you coming on, man. Anytime, Always man. great to hear your story. And uh, man, I know you're gonna do well over there. And I gotta come over there and eat with you, break some bread. All right, how about that? Come on, come on brother. Right, matter, brother. Matter of fact, this is where I get um, well, my wife and I were also an owner of a, a preschool in West Palm. So we're oh wow, we're over there daily. We got um, a facility, 10,000 square feet. Our oh, capacity okay. is 165, but our school, um, we teach the kids. I don't care from the one year old to the BPK out the schoolers and you know, have a future vision to do some other things. But you what, know, what's that, the name of the school? It's Grace Hill Academy. Okay. Grace Hill Academy Preschool, uh, right there in West Palm Beach, in the down in the and uh, Full Time Plaza. But we're we have a large area there where we have like ten thousand square feet. Very very beautiful teachers. You know they teach our kids the learning, and um, that's what you know. I'm just grateful for. So, right. but wow, our kids our kids, our kids need that. KV, yes, our kids need yes. to be taught right from wrong. You know, they this whole world needs to learn things like that, not just these kids. It's yeah. you know, so bless you, baby. That's 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 awesome. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to pray. Thank you, KB. All right, bless, bless you, brother. Great seeing you, KB. Great Great seeing you. Wow, man, that was awesome. Jeez. Two two guys that had kids attend the University of Miami after their great playing careers there. Mm -hmm. uh that that had to be like like kb said it, it had it was special it had to be special to, to have your kid go where you spent four or five years walking that campus um now your kid is doing it whether some years later or not it's still the same you know thing the buildings might have changed they might have tore down the the, the 36 or whatever 36. but it's yeah. building 36 um uh, but it's still the same campus. I mean, you still got the same bridge. You still got the same student union. Hell, you probably still got the same couches in that mother. So you know, it's the same old thing. Hey, has, has any has any le legacies child outperformed the parent that you know of off the top of your head? Hmm. I know Ray's kid didn't do well here. No, Mike's no. kid didn't. Mike's kid Mike's didn't kid do well. Didn't. I don't know. That's a good. That's a good. That's a really good question. That's yeah, really I don't, good I don't, I don't, I, I'm not thinking of anyone. One, you know, I did talk to Russell a couple of weeks ago, and he did tell me about his kid who wanted to play at Miami. Yeah, and I'm not going to name the name, but he said there was a tight end that Miami was after, and apparently that kid told the coaching staff, Mario, if Russell's kid comes, I'm not coming. Wow. So I'm not. I'm. You could guess who it probably was. So now he's playing, and he's out, and he's back in Texas playing. Where is he playing? He's at. Texas Tech or one of those schools. He's not at BC. He didn't go to BC either. He's in Texas playing, but he's, he's playing really well. I know Russell was hurt about that. Yeah, Russell, he was. Russell hurt really wanted his kid to. Yeah, he but, wanted. Just like we all, we all did. We all did. So yeah. what, what do you think Colbert's cool. reaction is going to be if Ruben doesn't come to Miami? <laughs> what's he going to? Oh, what's he going to say, Lamar? <laughs> Man, I don't even know. I I thought he was coming, but hell yeah. Yeah, obviously y'all boys ain't doing enough. <laughs> you know, I I I thought it, I thought he was it was all good. I talked to Melvin. Melvin the ghost had it all written in, but hell, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I've actually honestly I've discussed this with Tolbert. And mm -hmm. he he thinks the key is that they recruit him like he's not from yes. Dade County. Yes, he told me that too. He said yeah. he said all the kid wants, and you should do it anyway. Because if you don't do it, then, you know, you're showing you're, you're kind of there's lapses. And what the kid wants to be, everybody wants to be loved. But, you know, you don't want to take uh, for granted right. just because he's from here. And Tobert went there, everything. So 
That's what these kids want, but most of, and I know that's what he wants because Tobert told well, me. And it's happening too because they're, they're they're on this kid. Yeah, they are. The, the other day, the, um, the last home game, they were having pregame warmups, and uh, the O line and D line were warming up over there in the uh, West End Zone, like they like they always do. And um, Ruben was standing there, there watching, and uh, Jason Taylor looked over at him and said, "Let's go." Wow, you know, you know, let's go. You know, all the fame with Jason Taylor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're very well aware of who he is and they are all over him. All right, Lamar, let's take care of some business, man. Um, tell us a little bit about Canesware. All right. Oh yeah. Hurricanes football is back. Are you geared up yet? Have you been to Canesware and Davy recently? They have the latest gear for the Miami Hurricanes and Miami Dolphins too. Canesware is more than a store. It's an experience. They have the largest selection of Miami Hurricanes items in town. Items from Adidas, Dime Life, Flow Grown, other brands, including Team Sideline Apparel, and hundreds of different shirts, jerseys, polos, hoodies, hats, and in all sizes for men, women, kids, babies, and even pets. Canesware is your tailgating headquarters, tents, chairs, tables, flags, decals, magnets. License plates, sunglasses, and tattoos. They definitely will get you ready for your game days. So if you want Hurricanes gear or any South Florida Pro Team merchandise, they've got you covered all season long. So get on over to Canesware, located at 2511 South University Drive in Davie. And, of course, they're always open at Canesware.com. Canesware, the spot where Miami fans shop. Yep. Here yep. it is. It's a great and then, of course, well, and this is Kane's word behind me virtually to, uh, tonight. Um, but how about the law office of Christine Rosendahl, Lamar? Uh, you got your little card with you? Oh, you know, right here, baby. Keep my wallet right here. No, you never know what's going to happen when you walk out the door. You know, holidays are coming up. You know, things happen. So I keep this card right here. Christine Rosendahl, Esquire. She's a lawyer. And she's really, really, really good. Any criminal, any tickets, anything you got, she can handle it. And she's good. She's fair. She has a great reputation. Go on the website. You can read all the uh, all the referrals and all the all the testimonies from people of she's uh gotten them some gotten them out of some 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 issues. And people love her, man. She does a great job. I've used her a couple of times. Again. Things happen. It's not gonna always be perfect, but I keep this card right here so I can look this phone number up and call it as some lights get on. Ding, 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 ding. So check her out. We have her phone number down here. I'm waiting for it to scroll. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell, I got it right here. 561-512-6199. Or either email her at Christine Rosendahl Esquire at hotmail.com. She'll be waiting for your call. All right. Um Good job. <laughs> Honey IV makes a great point. He can't wait until we get Earl Little Jr. as a portal transfer. Oh, what's going to happen? He's, uh, he's not on the depth chart right now at Alabama. Right. I, think he's, I think they've been using him a little on special teams. I'm not sure of that. Right. But, I thought um, he got hurt myself. but Oh, did he know, get hurt? I, I thought he did, but maybe he didn't. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's going to be uh, knowing Earl – you know, it's, it's going to be a pride thing. It's going to be, you know, he has to decide whether it's the best thing for his child uh, coming back because he's going to have to tuck his tail a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, you went out there. Uh, and not saying it was anything bad that went on between in the whole recruiting process, but when you go to Alabama and you got program here with Mario and you go there, it's going to be some tail tucking. It's going to be some, you know, I mean, they're going to have to talk it out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but he's going to have to come in and compete. Regardless, if you're at Alabama or you're here, you're gonna have to come in and compete because we we keep building. That's what Mario is gonna continue to do. He's gonna keep building and building. We're gonna continue to get better players. And um, you know, if you don't come in in time, you know, look, we already got the West Virginia transfer, uh, Daryl Porter, son, who I think is gonna be a hell of a corner. I mean, I think if I if I'm not mistaken, he was starting up at West Virginia. He was. He was. So he has a lot. He has some experience, and he. Uh, He's been playing well. He's done some really good things this season. So, you know, he's gonna it's gonna continue to get better. And I'm yeah. sure some other guys are gonna jump on board also. 
Yeah, you know, Gary, you were talking about positivity yesterday. I mentioned it earlier. So for me, the positivity is are these 18 names. Um, the offensive lineman, what's his name? Meyer Goa, you got Jaden Wayne, you got Rashada, you got Malik Bryant, Riley Williams, Nate Joseph, Robert Stafford, Bobby Washington, Ty- Tyreek Citizen, Raul Aguirre, Jacory Brown, Kamari Rogers, Jaleel Skinner, the Saint. Cyrus Moss, Ines Cooper, Colby Young, Nigel Kelly. That's 18 names. That wouldn't have been here, I don't think, if we had the other coach. So as far as me being positive, I look at those names and I'm thinking, damn. And he's not done yet. And you said December is going to be a blow-off month. So I think he's going to turn over at least 25, 30 guys. Or I, that that many, many, many. I, I think there'll be 20 guys going to the portal. Yeah. And so I think we're going to get more guys in here. And these names are not just names that, gee, who the hell are they? We know who these guys are. So I'm, I'm positive. Maybe not at three and three, but I'm happy about where we're going with this guy. He's just got to, I mean, I don't, he, he's got to weed out the guys he doesn't yeah. want. And it's it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. happen. Yeah, you know, it's going to happen. I don't know because if coaches he doesn't want, but, you know, it, we'll see. It, as we well know, Miami's not for everybody. And so, you know, well, I, we, right. we, Miami is not for everybody. Right. Not for know, everybody. We, we, we've all seen some guys come down here to just, it's just a little bit too much for them. So, yep. you know, it, it, now since Mario's here, um, you know, some it might be, it's not the country club anymore. Not, not trying to say that Manny D, who, by the way, got ran through <laughs> uh, against Michigan. <laughs> He gave up 35 points in the fourth he gave quarter. Up a lot. Like that? I thought it was North Carolina all over again. But anyway, <laughs> uh, they had the turnover chain that night, boy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, it's 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 a different it's a different outlook over there. It really is. It truly is. You, can, and you can tell. You can tell. And I forgot to ask Kenny and Bear what was it like to know that 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 Mario came in the fold, you know, because it, it's one of our own. Not saying that those other guys weren't. I mean, Randy was too, you know, but it's uh, it's just a little different now. Randy, you know, obviously, it's Randy's first job, man, that's a hard job. Yeah. And and, and, and Manny found that out. You, your first head coaching job, Miami, nah, it's, it's, like, it's like coaching in the SEC. When you go to the SEC uh, conference, they make you go to this uh, – they make you go to this this when you first hired in the SEC. They make you go to Birmingham, and you're in the SEC meet with all the other first year coaches, and you're looking around. And the SEC commissioner Swanky or Skanky or whatever the Skanky or I don't Stinky. know his name, or whatever the hell his name. He said he said look to your left and look to your right. I guarantee you, this is not your first job. You have to work yeah. your way up to the SEC. Yep. You know, I was talking to somebody at Notre Dame today. They're experiencing the same thing with Marcus Freeman. You know, I they think they've lost three times already. Yeah, it's not uh, It's no, not a lot different. You know, you just can't put anybody in these jobs and think yeah. they're going to win. It's yeah. They're too big. And, yeah. I mean, look what Mario's going through this year. I mean, if you're not, like, the toughest SOB in the 305, you ain't dealing yeah. with everything Mario's dealing with right now. Yeah. Pretty you good. Gotta be in, you got to be in it to win it. Got to be hey, one of these guys wants to know if, if any of the three, why don't we get Sap on the show or Shockey? Well, I've asked Sap. I, I guess you have. I know Mark's tried. I call, I called Ryan Collins, who's one of his best friends. He's probably not going to do it. But Shockey, I think we can get because I, I could talk to Drew or something. Well, I'll keep working on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, I can work on Sap. Well, Sap, work on Sap. You run into Sap on the he, golf course. He's, he's asked to come on the show a couple of times. It's I just, could let him on the it's show. Just, just getting him at the right time, you know. That's all. He's know, a right, very busy I, man. I have a short window for yeah, that. Yeah, okay. he's a very busy man. So we'll get him on eventually. Right, who, who asked that? We'll get him on, and and, and I'll try uh, to Lenore reach out to Murray. Shockey. Murray, we'll try. Lenore, we'll, we'll yeah, try to yeah, get him on. Murray. Shockey, Shockey's a good. I think he'll be a good guest also. Yeah, he'd we'll be try great. to get him on. Right. We'll, he'd we'll, be we'll, great. We'll, we'll, we'll try to go outside the bubble a little bit. We'll get some of those guys. On. Right. All right, Bruce, uh, we're going to let you go. Uh, we'll see you on Saturday for the post-game show after the Duke game. And uh, let's hope sure there's going to be winter. a ton to talk about. All right, let's hope it's the winner. All right, you guys, be well, stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, Bruce, All right, thanks Bruce. for being oh, part of this. Kingswear, baby, Kingswear. That's right. That's, That's right. Go. <laughs> All right, LT, 
Let's yeah, take buddy. this thing home with a little word right. association. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to start with Duke. Mm. Duke. Man, Duke. I mean, Duke. Kind of scratched my head on that program because, you know, back, you know, years ago, it was a basketball school. It was an easy win. A bunch of smart guys out there. You know, they were getting ready for finals all the time. And, you know, we they had, you know, they were good offense, not very good defense, but they, that program's come a long way. They've had some, um, you know, very good coaches. Just I don't know if he got fired or he was there a long time. Uh, now they got a new coach, Elko. Uh, they, they do some good things. I think the program is headed in the right direction, but they're still Duke. Yeah, so they're still Duke. They're, still Duke. <laughs> they're, they're, still they're, Duke they're, they're 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 a little bit better than Virginia Tech. So you can't make dumb penalties. You can't give them the you you can't do it because they can they can anybody can step up on you and bite you in the butt. Because oh you know I, I think they're a good program. They've come a long way and they're still I think they're they're thriving. But they're they're the bottom. They're the bottom. They're in the bottom echelon of the ACC. So. You know, we got to we got to do better. So hopefully they have, they have a quarterback that could flat play Lamar. Yeah. He can run. He can run, yes. too. They're going to have to really be on their stuff at the line of scrimmage. Yes. And, and we I mean, we just got to we got to lane integrity. You know, we got to do it. We on defense. You got to do your assignment, do your job. Don't let him run wild. Make some plays. Don't have dumb penalties. Also. Communicate on the back end. Yep. That's been a big problem. Communication on the back end, which they got a little better at last week, but you can't have those dumb penalties, and you can't have a second half. Go out like you played in that first half. Yep. Hey, how about uh, Colby Young? Man, I mean, for a, for a streak runner, <laughs> a go runner, uh, he's doing well right now. I'd love to see him do more things in the offense. I mean, as a coach, uh, you have to spend some uh, as much time as you can with this kid to, to get him to feel comfortable. Uh, but he does give you downfield presence. And obviously this is what Gaddis likes. He likes the downfield stuff. So he fits right in. And now you can bring guys, you run him all, throw it deep a couple of times. Now you can bring guys all the way over and fill that board and hit them in the hole in the soft spot. So it, it opens up Gaddis's offense in a way, but your offensive line has to block too. But I like what Mr. Young is doing. Uh, he's a big dude too. I actually thought he was a tight end at first, but he is a big dude and he's physical. And that one hand catch was sweet. That was sweet, huh? Was he sweet. only runs, I think, like four six and change, Lamar. Yeah. So, uh, so, and, did, so did the Rondé Gasson. But they made plays. Those big guys, man, they they don't look like they're moving, and you kind of take them for granted a little bit, and they get up on you because they're so big. Michael Irvin wasn't that fast, but they get up on you and they position their bodies where now you're. You're running their speed. You're not if you run a four three, but they get up on you and they put that body on you, you're not running the four six. Right. And you don't know how to handle running the four six. Right. <laughs> how about TVD, man? TVD. Another big game. You know, he has to have a, a, a huge game. Love to see him continue to be a, a, a leader. You know, I think the team needs a leader. And he's the quarterback. He's the guy that we came into this season uh praising. So, you know, need to build off of the, the 500 yards, almost 500 yards, and the win from last week. You continue to build, and, you know, you just – you try to put that first half – you try to have a first half and a second half, put it together, try to get this team out the ball game, and try to beat them pretty good. And what about Josh Gaddis? Josh, I mean – your quarterback, it seems like you guys are now getting on the same page. You know, obviously, you got to do more with the run game. You know, for his offense to work, I mean, I, from what I'm seeing, for his offense to truly work, um, you got to get a running game. And so you got to manufacture some some tough yards running. I mean, obviously, you know, we've had a lot of injuries at the running back position, but you got to be able to manufacture a running game so it can open up some of those downfield and intermediate intermediate routes that he likes in his offense, but they're not open if you can't run the ball. Yeah, and I think they're working hard on that this week. Yes, yes. All right, Lamar, another great show. Uh, I'm glad that 
after about an hour and a half of trying that you were able to figure out that you needed to take the cap oh, off man. your webcam. Wait, wait, let me show you. Hold on. Wait, wait, let me do it. There it is. That's, That's what, what I was talking at. I'm That's like, what we oh, saw. <laughs> I'm like, man, what is going on here? That's what we saw. But I'm glad you were able to figure it out in time for the eight o'clock start of the show. Time to go eat your baked ziti. My baked ziti. I, I imagine your kids really ate all the pizza. Oh yeah, I got one slice and I got. But I'm a, I'm a baked ziti. It's gonna take me a whole week to eat this, so I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. All right, LT. Well, uh, have fun on your XFL uh, stuff over the next couple of days, and uh, yes. we'll be back next Wednesday night. The Canes play Duke on Saturday at Hard Rock Stadium. For Lamar Thomas, I'm Gary Furman. We want to thank Canesware, the law office of Christine Rosendahl, for sponsoring our show tonight. And we'll see you guys next Wednesday. Have a have a great weekend at the U. I mean at, at the Rock, everybody. Go Canes. <laughs>